Hi guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World on YouTube Medium and at DanielRosehill.tech. So what I want to do in this quick video is to, again, on the favorite topic of the channel of all time of backups, <laughs> the exciting topic of backups, I want to talk about how the system I've been using for a few years now to back up my writing. So as a writer, um, I do a lot of writing, mostly for clients. I do a little bit of stuff uh, myself as well just on various websites to keep active you could say and show the world I exist um, and it's really really important to back up all this all to back up everything I mean I've written and covered articles about how to back up everything from SaaS which is something people never think about backing up to your web hosting infrastructure to your local computer to your network servers I've covered it all in so far in this YouTube channel but don't forget to pay particular attention if you're a writer to backing up your writing. So here's my system. Um, now, I have this WordPress multi, uh, WordPress multi site at danielrosehill.co.il. This is all how it looks at the time you're writing. It may have changed by the time you watch this video. Um, but here is one of the child sites, one of the mi micro sites. Um, it's basically this really, really bare bones archive of all the stuff I've written, and you can see my latest piece is something about Linux, for uh, in the Linux OS, and uh, I'll show you how it works. It's so this is the link. You click on the link, and uh, the person will. Oh, I need to change the. Uh, I need to change that description. Uh, the person will will get to my article. Um, and you can see under there's another field here called where it's been published in the Linux OS in Micro Bismag. Um, this one is missing one. Sorry, it's not in Code People, Medium, etc. Um, now I also have a blog, and it is at this website. Now what I do is essentially is everything I publish goes to one of these two destinations, and that's actually my backup methodology. I'm going to explain in a second. Um, this is for, I'm trying not to post medium things anymore. I think it's a bit probably amateurish, Times of Israel. Stuff that's more, you know, serious publications or stuff I've placed, uh, I will be putting up here. Um, and then things that I have not published elsewhere that are just kind of my more casual day-to-day -day sort of blogging about technology Linux, I publish on this blog. And uh, just if you are republishing slash syndicating stuff, Make sure to put in the canonical URL to indicate to Google that the repost is a secondary replication of the original post. So one of the two, and as I said, that is actually this is actually for, done for the purpose of backup. This is occasionally I will send this link to people. Really, it's for my own purposes. Um, but if I zoom in a bit, you will see that in addition to the link. And the publication there is original link and local backup now if we click on local backup for uh, this piece efficient three pool data backup strategy you need to know about you can see that it will open a pdf and if you pay attention to what's in the omnibox in chrome you can see that it's just a pdf that i have uploaded to that post on wordpress so how did i make the system work um firstly i took a wordpress theme called the chosen and I created a child theme. So anytime you're customizing themes, you want to build out a child theme. It's not as hard as it may sound, if that sounds scary to you. You just copy the theme uh, folder and you change the uh, CSS. Uh, just note in the description it's a child theme, child theme so, you, so that you know when you're applying the theme in, a, in your site or in your child site that that's what you're doing. Um, and then when you make, there's a couple more things to do, but that's that's, that's the quick run through of it. And then when you make changes to files like this file, postbyline.php, um, the theme can upgrade. You can upgrade so that you can see I'm not getting a notification. I'm running the latest version of the theme. Um, but your edits, the edits you've hard coded into the PHP will not be overwritten when the, when the theme maintainer updates that theme. So uh, basically, if you're customizing your themes and you're not just doing it in the CSS editor and WordPress, you need to do this. So I've gone ahead and I've changed, I've added uh, where you can see it says, here we go, um, original URL, and that's calling PHP the field original URL. You see here the the hyperlink, uh, the hyperlink ends here um, at the at the closing bracket here. 
Um, and then I have another one here, local copy is here. Um, and that actually links off to the backup and uh, published in is another field. So we've actually got three custom fields. Now, to create these, I use this plugin called Advanced Custom Fields. It's a really popular plugin. It has w more than 1 million installations. It's regularly updated three weeks ago when I'm recording this video and it runs on PHP 5 or higher. So uh, this is, there's a few custom field plugins that allow you to create these custom fields. This is, uh, I think, about the nicest one. Very, very well used, very well supported. People call it ACF, that's the abbreviation. So that's how, that's what these are. They're calling custom fields that I've created in ACF. So how did I do that? You go into custom fields. I have a field group called bylined writing and that's my custom field group just for this. Um, I wouldn't call it portfolio piece. I'd call it more archive. Um, and you can see I've created one for the original URL and that's, um, that's this. So I've replaced in the uh, archive field, I've, re I've replaced the PHP, the calls for the post and I've replaced that with original URL. And what I do is when I publish stuff, I copy and paste the URL there. Then there's local copy, that's a file, so it's beautiful. I can actually just upload the PDF. I have local copy updated and there's local copy too and just local copy because I actually originally had the had this uh, archive in DSR ghostwriting and then I migrated it over. So in the, in the process of migrating, I created a new field. And you can see here publication title, that's a text field. So that's basically how it works. Now, my point is this. Uh, this allows me to have an archive and all I, because all the PDFs, instead of storing them in my Google Drive or my computer, they're back, they're actually stored in danielroso.co.il on my website. All I need to do is periodically back up my website and by backing up my website, I capture all the copies of my articles. Now, these are just kind of PDFs. Look, it's, it's ugly. I didn't get rid of the advertising. Um, it's mostly for my own use. I, I pay more attention to the to the ones um, that I, you know that that are kind of my best, let's say, showcase work. Um, so that's kind of sloppy, but you know, do by all means do them professionally. You get a there's rolling screenshot tools that allow you to do a very nice job and use one of those and do a lovely job. And I'll show you how it works. So let's just take, let me uh, claim. You know what? Let 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 me not claim an article as my own. Let's actually find the last article I wrote, um, and it might be double posting this. How much do freelancers charge for writing? So again, I wouldn't. I don't back up my blogs on DSR Ghostwriting because um, I back up DSR Ghostwriting, and oh, my endless to-do list today. I have a uh, interesting. I need to. I need to fix that broken image. This is just a new a new build. So. Um, how much do freelancers charge for writing? So basically, let's say I wanted to put this into that. So what I would do is go into uh, byline writing, new post, and just, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Put the title and it's an upper case. I'm just going to quickly do this. How much do freelancers charge for writing? And then I would do my uh, PDF uh, copy uh, to, to print out that screen as a PDF. So for the purpose of doing this one quickly, I'm just using the usual approach, which if you don't know it, you can actually just go into print and change the destination to uh, save as PDF in Google Chrome. Now, once I've set up these custom fields and advanced custom fields, I get these lovely custom fields here. So you can see my original URL field is there, my local copy and my published title, and I'm using this one now updated. So what I will do is just come over and put this here as original URL and all I have to do then is upload the PDF that I've just grabbed as my local copy. So I'm just uploading that PDF. Now it'll take a couple, a couple more seconds to upload into WordPress. And that's basically it. I have another field here called uh, publication title which I'll call DSR Ghost Writing Blog and I'm, gonna go, I'm going to go ahead and delete this after I uh, publish this categories uh, this sorts it according to the categories at the top of the website so I'm going to call this business freelancing and uh, that's basically it I don't use this 
it's not it's again it's a reference archive so i don't put this i don't bother creating meta tags i think it's actually blocked even in robots.txt so that's really all i do i click on the publish button and if we refresh this page in just a second we can see i will have a new post at the top here called how much do freelancers charge click on the link it's pulling from i also i also set this to open in a new tab and it goes directly to the custom field we configured as original URL. And if I click on local backup, the PDF that I uploaded is backed up. And now when I run my daily backup of danielrosehill.co.il, it will pull in this PDF and therefore it'll be nicely backed up. So this is it guys, this is my current system. Um, I worry about a few things more than losing the writing that I poured so much effort into. Um, and uh, of course you can just store it on your computer back it up that way but I like this methodology because I like to, I like to keep things online and it allows me to have this little website that I can just I mean it's totally manual it's it's actually there's actually six seven I think 700 or so you can see it goes back to when I was in college and the only thing that I regret about this is that there's probably a few hundred articles not here they may not be the best things I've ever written but they're part of my journey let's say an evolution as a writer and uh, it's a pity that I this is a partial selection because you know PDFs do not uh, PDFs do not weigh that much of just writing jobs and it's nice to be able to go through an archive I need to update some of these um, but all the more recent stuff is there and you know from about probably a year or two ago going forward I have been diligent about doing this so I can go through um, old pieces and even the ones that I don't have they haven't updated the fields yet the PDF is there we just need to go back into the WordPress backend and swap out the, the updated uh, links so that's it that's my methodology not saying it's the best one but it is a system for um, backing up your writing onto a WordPress just to reiterate you need to firstly install advanced custom fields go in create a few custom fields edit your theme um, and then my implementation has been changing the uh, default permalinks with the publication title etc as I've done here and that allows me to have this archive which I can search through that's typically what I use it for actually is I just literally do a not even a search there's not even a search bar here it's just again it's for my own reference I'll just say like Ubuntu and I can quickly leave through four articles that I've written mentioning Ubuntu and if I wanted to send them to I don't know, someone who wanted to see, asked me what have you written about Ubuntu, I'd say, here you go, one, two, three, four. And like that, I've called up all from the original websites, this one from Linux Int, Medium, something that obviously needs to be updated, and uh, the LinuxOS.com. So yeah, the the old stuff is a little bit patchy in terms of how well it's, uh, it's running on the front end, but on the back end, all the data should still be there. So that's it, guys. That's my thing. Any anyone who wants to get in contact can always reach out to me through danielrosil.co.il and thank you for watching.